So we want to take a deep breath. I'm going to ask somebody back here to, to dim the lights, please, so that we can uh, take some time to go in and be still and quiet. So we all know what to do here, but just in case we've forgotten, let's all take a few deep, conscious, healing breaths. And this is the deep healing breath that takes us to the core of our being, that core known by many names, but our place of wisdom and peace, our place of centeredness and mindfulness, the place that some call the kingdom of heaven, the place where we know all is well, beyond all confusion or uncertainty, all is well, all is well. As we continue to breathe gently, I invite you to listen to the words of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah said, in returning, talking about returning to that place we're just talking about, to the center. In returning and rest, you shall be saved. In returning to that place of centeredness, and returning to that place of rest, we save ourselves. In quietness and in trust shall be your strength. That's the place we want to focus on in these few moments we have together today. We focus on this idea that in the pause, in that silent moment, in quietness and trust, we feel that saving grace, meaning we return again. We begin again. We call ourselves back. We call ourselves home. Sometimes we wander in the land of forgetfulness. We call ourselves home. We return again and again and again to the place of love, forgiveness, wisdom, peace, stamina and strength, faith and trust, creativity, courage. We return to these divine ideas and most importantly, we return to the divine idea that each one of us is the light of the world. So as we take another deep healing breath, we allow ourselves to sit in the silence and the stillness for a few moments to feel our strength. Particularly in this moment, some of our beloveds who are recovering, Cassandra Salo out of the hospital, Sandy Hansen out of the hospital, and Kevin Dunn, all three recovering. We bless our community, all the beloveds we hold in our hearts, near and far. We bless our species, our planet. 
all nations, all cultures, all religions, <coughs> all life on this planet, the water, the winged ones, the finned ones, the soil, the oceans, the rivers, the air. <coughs> we may not know in this moment particularly what is ours to do. We know what is ours to be. Presence of healing, transformation, renewal, taking action for the right and perfect unfolding for our human family and our planet. <coughs> We give thanks to remember who we are right here, right now, at this moment. And we say, so it is, and so it will be. Namaste. Now, one more time, turn to someone and pronounce to them who they are. And to get the lights up, we thank you for being the light of the world. Just say, thank you for being the light of the world. You're welcome. You're welcome, somebody said. <laughs> some extra strength and some extra courage and some extra confidence and some extra stability. How many felt that maybe in the last week, the last hour, the last week? Okay, so we're all human, walking each other home, and that means walking each other home to that consciousness where we remember what we just did, we're the light of the world. We're walking each other home. How many of us will forget from time to time? Every hand needs to go up, thank you. So today is about the power of strength and courage, and I wanted to kind of take us into the Memorial Day week. That's where we're headed, it's coming up soon. A time to remember those who are serving, those who served in the armed forces. I also like to say thank you to everybody who's serving in the world of awakening right now. A different kind of service. But we want to acknowledge these folks. And particularly because next Sunday, our guest speaker, Jim Rosemurgy, is a wonderful example of moving from war to being a worker for the light in the world. He flew over 100 missions uh, dropping bombs on North Vietnam during that war. And then he got out of the service and went into ministry. I like David. Yes, sir. Do you know what, what branch of the military is he in? Do you know? We'll find out next Sunday. <laughs> but I would guess the Air Force <laughs> because he was flying a bomber over North Vietnam. Yeah, he's, he's a well-known Unity Ministry. He's been in the movement for many, 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 many years, has served in many capacities at Unity Worldwide Ministries. He's written over a dozen books, New Thought books. One of the messages he will bring to us is about prosperity, and this is his book, Even Mystics Have Bills to Pay, which I love the title. Uh, years ago, I drove to Palo Alto Unity from Santa Barbara to be in a week of SEE classes, and he was one of the teachers. He's fabulous. Um, he will be with us as our speaker next Sunday. I thought, how wonderful, Memorial Day, because all of us in some way or another move from the consciousness of war to the consciousness of peace somewhere along the way. And his is a journey that I'm sure that will inspire us. And then the two-day class that we'll be doing on the 28th and 29th. So there's flyers downstairs about that. And so as we move into this idea of power, of strength, and courage, I want to remind us of this kind of demonstration of courage. Now, I've never had to stand in front of a tank. 
but some in this room have. I've never had to carry a gun into war, but some in this room have, or in this community have. I have never had to stand up to someone who was threatening uh, me with this kind of, this kind of war power, but some of them in this room have. So when we talk about strength and courage today, you know, it comes in so many forms. I think some of the most courageous people are people who have children and raise them. I think some of the most courageous people in the world are people who take on parenting or be a school teacher uh, or counselors or therapists or social workers. I applaud the courage and strength in this community. I know some of your stories and you, you inspire me. But this is, this is one of the pictures that I look at sometimes to help me remember that you know, I don't know what happened to this young man after this. And I couldn't find it on Google. I, mean, I don't even know his name. I don't know what happened to him. That's Tenement Square. That's Tenement Square, but we don't know who this individual was. But I bless this individual for inspiring our species to what? To take a stand? To stand in the midst of, uh, what, we, what will we call that? that kind of controlling power. Let's just take a deep breath. We bless his soul wherever he is. David and Goliath, this writer of this book, Divine Audacity, Linda Martellowitz, who's going to be our Unity keynote this coming Canuga in September. She talks about this very well-known story. Everybody know the David and Goliath story? Uh, so Goliath was a really big guy. He was a really big giant of a guy. And he had so much protective gear and so many weapons, and he was so huge that he was kind of a bully. And this young man, David, who was a simple shepherd boy, had an audacious idea, a divine idea, planted in his consciousness that he could take a stand in Tiananmen Square against the big, mighty, giant Goliath. And it's a very well-known story. David, with his slingshot, takes five stones, but it only takes one, and catches Goliath right in the center of the forehead and knocks him out. Now, the idea in metaphysics is we look at all the characters of a story as aspects of ourselves. So I would venture to guess that all of us have Goliath thoughts from time to time, or our species does. A Goliath thought, if I can put one more lock on my door, if I can build a wall and keep the, those people out, if I can create more bombs, if I can attack another nation and show them who's boss, what will it take for our species to get that that kind of thinking isn't working, it's not helping us overall in the big picture? The Goliath consciousness is huge in the world right now. Mm -hmm. And guess what? So is the David consciousness. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's take a deep breath on that. The David consciousness that knows that strength is not in another atomic bomb. Strength is doing the work in our consciousness so that we know that we are at one with the one presence and with each other. And there's really nothing we can do about that. We're all connected, and your welfare helps me in my welfare. Your state of well-being helps me in my state of well-being. You're all the way across on the other side of the planet. I need to be as concerned about the health of your water and your air as I do about my own. That's the oneness consciousness. So that consciousness is alive in the world, and it's growing, 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 growing. Somebody should say, that's good news. So the work of being in the David consciousness is doing the inner work. So here's some of the Davids in the world right now. You may not agree with their politics. That's okay. But they are taking a stand. They are standing up against the 
war or the big consciousness. What kind of consciousness are they standing up against? Oh, I don't know, big pharma? Plastic. Plastic. They're standing, they take a stand for taking care of our planet. They're taking a stand against big pharma, privatized medicine, Bank. banking. Who else? Health. What health? The health industry, privatized prison. We've got some issues in our species. We gave take care of business. David consciousness is growing. But these are some of the people. I read a wonderful article on Ralph Nader lately. You know, he was laughed at by the world, and now most every candidate has everything on their agenda, as Ralph Nader was talking about. For how how many decades ago? Let's take a deep breath. David consciousness is being invited to grow stronger in the world. These folks, David consciousness, the consciousness that speaks out and says, why do we have war weapons on the street? Why do we have automatic rifles and war weapons on the street in the common hands of the common citizenry? They're asking a question. Why am I afraid to go to school? I know the issue is mental health, but there seems to be an idea that we want to reflect on while we're getting healthier mentally. Might it be a good idea to take the weapons of mass killing out of the hands of people who are mentally ill? Mental health, emotional health, because we all have emotional issues that we need to, that's not exactly a physical, even though it's connected. It's, it's something that's a little bit different. So. so let's take a deep breath. This is not an easy message to give, y'all, because I have moments of losing my, um, I periodically lose my awareness that I'm stronger than the fear. And I imagine that there are people in the room who have the same experience. It's a time for us to lift each other up and help us remember every moment in the twinkling of an eye who we are, because there's just so much. These children, some of them were just being born in 1999 when Columbine happened. They are angry. They are taking a stand and being ridiculed. Bless them. Bless their souls. Hold them in prayer. This morning on the way to church, I was pondering, how do I give a message on courage and strength and tenacity when sometimes it's all I can do to pull myself up and be ready to be here with you? We are all being taken to our knees in one way or another. And that's just the truth of it. This is when we hold each other in prayer. So on the way here this morning, pray. Give me what I need to stand up here today and do what I need to do and say what needs to be said and do it in a way where we can hear and see and be inspired, each one of us. And I turned on NPR. And they were talking about the young man who survived Columbine, was put on anti-anxiety drugs because his PTSD was so bad. And then he got addicted to opiates and a few days ago lost his life to that. And there are veterans coming home from war doing the same thing. Can our hearts bear it? Can our hearts hold it? Sometimes I feel like I can't. And then I remember, I'm the light of the world. I've got capacities and strengths that I need to open to. I know they're in here. I know they're with me. I have to keep taking the deep breath. I have to keep opening to who I am. Otherwise, I will tumble into the abyss. I still take a deep breath. This young woman, 16, she was 15 years old when she did it. 
She went to the climate change conference and she spoke at the UN and she said to the leaders, my generation is coming to make changes. Get ready. That's her Tiananmen Square. 15 years old when she did it, standing up in front of power and authority. That's her, that was her Tiananmen Square. I don't know what yours is going to be. A lot of babies coming in now. A lot of babies coming in now. There was a picture of her uh, on the news, BBC, within the last few weeks, of her sitting with Jane Goodall, and they're both looking into one another's eyes, like, getting it. You know, one generation handing off to the next generation. You know, here's, here's the struggle, here's the issue. You know, do what you can. The David consciousness growing. Here's another David consciousness, the young woman, uh, her name is uh, Celie Tignowski, something like that. She's teaching mindfulness. She started learning mindfulness when she was a little girl. Now she teaches mindfulness. And mindfulness is being taught in a lot of schools around the country now. This is good news. This helps us to be in our David consciousness. Meditation, silence, the pause, the deep breath helps us to know, well, I may be called to a Tiananmen Square today. I may be called to take a stand against big power in some way or another. So I'm going to need that extra silence, peace, pause, prayer. So here's what she says. Make fear your friend. Invite it in. This can make courage more accessible. So what do I have to do if I'm in my Tiananmen Square and I don't know who's in that tank? I don't know if their finger's on the trigger of that big gun or not, but when I take my stand, I'm inviting in this perceived enemy into my heart, into my consciousness. You've heard this before. Jesus said it. Love your enemies and pray for your enemies. This is the same thing. Invite in the fear. Make it your friend. Let it be heard and then speak the truth. Embrace courage as a mindful response to fear. Forego fight or flight. Take the silent pause and feel the courage rise up. So it doesn't mean that we deny that the fear is there. It only means that we allow the courage that's also there to rise up. Does that make sense? And choose to be bold by setting intention to act. I don't know when my Tiananmen Square is going to happen, but I'm going to set intention that when it does, I'll be ready to speak and take a stand and do what's mine to do. I don't know when the Tiananmen Square moment's going to come, but I'm going to be ready in my heart and in my practice. I'm going to be ready to do what needs to be done to take the stand. And if I'm not ready, I'll call one of you to do it. So persisting in the practice. Do we break down? Do we get stuck? Y'all know the song? Even the best fall down sometimes. Even the stars refuse to shine. We're going to have those moments. So Tiananmen Square is happening. We need all the people who are willing to take a stand and we go, can't see me. I'm not ready to go to that Tiananmen Square. Even the stars refuse to shine sometimes. The clouds pass and the stars shine again, right? Tenacity, driven by the intention and the vision, as my dad used to say, getting us ready for school, press on! Press on, get ready, press on. So tenacity is a part of courage. Tenacity is a part of strength. What does it mean?
on the 40th try. <laughs> You know, the same thing with the light bulb. We all know the story about Edison. It's like, how many failures do you have to have before the light goes on? 40 times for WD-40. Now, to make it a little bit bigger, from the bigger perspective, how many of us catch ourselves saying, we're never going to pull out of this one as a species? It's too hard. We've gone too far. It's too late or felt that. So I'm going to offer to you, I propose to you to consider, ponder, pray about, look at this idea. Awakening is happening. We just ain't done yet. I just heard my English teacher go, oh my God, <laughs> Awakening is upon us. We're just not fully cooked yet. The issues are being transformed. Healing is happening. We just don't see it 100%. But we've got to focus on what is transforming and healing and renewing rather than focusing on what's not enough. What's not enough. And actually, Jim Roseberg's topic next Sunday is more than enough. Everybody touch your heart and say, I am more than enough. <laughs> and also, I have more than enough. More than and that especially this morning applies to our strength, our courage, and our tenacity. We have more than enough of that. The idea is to put it to work. <laughs> Experiment with it. Let it express through us. So begin again and again and again and again and again. Sometimes we will actually say things to ourselves like, I can't believe I did that again. I can't believe I'm still doing that. I can't believe I let myself think that, do that, be that, ask for that. I can't believe it. I'm still doing that. And the inner wisdom says, begin again. Just begin again. And in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. They that wait... They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. Again, prophet Isaiah. I'd love to sit down with him and have a cup of tea. <laughs> they that wait upon the... So what does that mean, the waiting? Sometimes it means in terms of time. Give it time. How many of us know about that? Give it time. Wait a minute. Give it time. But it also means waiting on hearing, intuiting, inciting what is ours to do and be. It's the in, intuitive, uh, the intuitive messaging or the receiving of the inspired idea of what we're supposed to do and be in this moment. We wait. It's like when we're in the silent pause, it's like we're, we're extra ready to hear and intuit and sense. What is ours to do? So I'll end with this story. David and I were in Los Angeles. We were on our way in an airport shuttle uh, from Santa Barbara to the LA airport. And something huge had just happened. The Rodney King trial was over and people were rioting in the streets about the verdict. So we could hear on the shuttle uh, intercom, we could hear him talking to his dispatcher telling the dispatchers before the GPS were so great, he was telling him what streets to go down and what streets not to go down because there were fires and people riding. So take a deep breath. So we got to the airport. And when we walked in, right as we walked in, we could hear gunshots. People were firing at the airplanes as they were taking off. So they had asked people, go to the floor. People were, we walked in, people sitting on the floor everywhere. It was chaos. And I watched my husband do something totally out of character. He slipped down by a pole like this with the pole at his back. He just slipped down onto the floor. And he went really quiet. And he was praying, he was pausing, and he was waiting. 
He went into that place called waiting on the Lord, waiting on the higher consciousness to kick in, waiting on that higher consciousness to be revealed because there was a lot of fear in the room. I didn't know till much later that in his mind, he was also back at the um, the Nang airport trying to get out of Vietnam during the Tet Offensive. That's where he went back to with guns firing at the airport. So I sat down with him and we went into the quiet pause and we waited, we just waited to know what to do next. And while other planes weren't taking off and plane uh, flights were getting canceled, this airline attendant walks over to us and said, I know it's not where you want to go, but do you want to go to San Antonio and from there go to where you want to go? And David literally opened his eyes and goes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we are not just get us away from here. The courage sometimes to sit in the silence and wait, the courage to not act immediately, the wisdom to go into that place of discernment, when is it good for me to get up and move? And when is it good for me to just slip down next to this pole and be real quiet? The courage it takes for us to continue in the world in these days where so much is shaking apart, I want you to just touch your heart right now and say, I am so filled with courage. That means to take heart, to be in your heart wisdom. And so we give thanks right now for the heart wisdom. We give thanks right now that our hearts, even though being broken, our hearts are open. It's hard to close them again. Our hearts are so very open to see and hear what is ours to see and hear, to be what we're called to be, to take our stand in our own Tiananmen squares whenever those may happen, to be a force of light in the world, to be in the consciousness of the David consciousness of knowing that the greatest battles will happen in our consciousness, the greatest healings will happen in our consciousness, and thereby express in the world, manifest it in the world. We give thanks for remembering this. We hold each other up in prayer and awareness that we are strength, we are courage, we are tenacity, we are the light of the world. And this is the truth, and so it is, and so we let it be. Namaste. 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 That brought to mind uh, that we can all be a David. We can all be a point of light in the darkness. And all those points of light and all those Davids gathered can just be blinding and just rush all those metaphorical cock cockroaches out of the <laughs> That's what I took from that. We can all gather our points of light and we'll be blinding, a blinding light.